Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome to Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano. It is great to have you joining us here on the program today. I want to ask you to click that subscribe button on whatever app that you're listening to this podcast on. We are on Apple iTunes. We are on Spotify. We are on Google Play, Stitcher. We are on iHeartRadio and that app, which I listen to podcasts and, and, and radio and music uh, on the iHeartRadio app. So wherever you're listening to this podcast, however you found it, maybe you found it on our website or on YouTube, whatever it is though, click that subscribe button. That allows you to never miss an episode of this podcast. We're releasing one every single day, uh, weekdays, Monday through Friday. You got a brand new episode in your podcast inbox from Sports Spectrum. And we get to talk to so many unique and different people in the world of sports and even outside of the world of sports. And today is no different. We have Danelle Bishop on the show. She is the head women's basketball coach for Division II Cal Poly Pomona. And Danelle is a great person. She's an awesome coach, by the way. Last year, she led her team to a 25-6 and record, 19-3 and in conference play. Again, Division II basketball. And Danelle has led Cal, Cal Poly to three Sweet 16s, two Elite Eights, and a Final Four appearance in 2014. There's a rich tradition of championship winning basketball at Cal Poly. They have five national titles to their credit. And Danelle has been a great leader for this team, entering her 10th season now as head women's basketball coach for Cal Poly. She's the 2013-2014 CCAA, California Collegiate Athletic Association Coach of the Year. She's married to Walter and has two kids, a daughter, Marissa, and her son, Walter, the fourth. And Danelle, on this podcast, we get into her story of faith, of course, but we also talk about Cal Poly and just being a women's basketball coach in today, 2019, and getting ready for this season, uh, how she brings her faith into her daily grind as a coach, how she stays poured into her, uh, her, or I should say stays connected in her faith to God. And also, we talk about assimilating women into the men's world of basketball as coaches, as front office leaders, especially in the NBA, and just her thoughts on that as well. This was a great conversation with Danelle Bishop. I think you'll like getting to know her story and her journey here on Sports Spectrum's podcast. Take a listen. Danelle, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. And I I told my husband, I don't know why he's asking me, but uh, it's a blessing and a great opportunity. So thank you. Well, listen, I mean, there there are many people out there making a difference for the kingdom in the work that they do. And uh, you have a large influence on the people that you coach, Division II, Cal Cal Poly Pomona. I'm going to get that mixed up because that's a lot of L's and P's and (laughs) C's in there. But I love uh, what you do, what you stand for. Let's start with your role with Cal Poly Pomona. It's a Division II school. You had a very successful season winning 25 games last year. So tell us a little bit about the school, um, how you kind of came about the job and and your role there, certainly coaching women's college basketball. There's a lot probably listening that may not be completely familiar with the school. Sure, yeah. I actually was coaching at a Christian local Christian college, um, you know, near, this, near the area in SoCal, and uh, was recently let go from my job there. And, uh, you know, she's actually a big part of my testimony. Mm. I tell a lot of people how I ended up at Cal Poly Pomona. Um, so I had, I had been let go, uh, for reasons, you know, I'm not really sure of, but, um, I was let go for, for whatever reasons and was, uh, uh just trying to apply for jobs was almost about ready to give up coaching mm. and, um, you know, just kind of was applying for jobs and was out of work for about six months. And the athletic director called me. And, um, I still remember that day I was at the beach with my, with my daughter. And, uh, he said, would you be interested in this interim position? And, uh, to be quite honest, I was not interested in interim because I, it was not, 
ready to, you know, put it, potentially that job didn't work out, um, you know, be in that same situation again. And so, uh, called my husband and, you know, my husband's like, you better take that job, that job <laughs> living in Southern California. So needs to say, I took the job and, um, that, that particular in my first year, I'm, I'm going on 10 years at Cal Poly and that first year, uh, was just a phenomenal year. And, um, you know, I, I still remember my husband when, as we were cutting down the nets, we hosted the NCAA tournament. Uh, we got the number one seed won that, uh, tournament to go on to the lead eight and we're cutting down nets in the gym. And, um, you know, I look over my husband never cries and, uh, you know, he's over there got tears of just joy because, you know, I had almost quit coaching. So, mm. um, it, it's a pretty, uh, it's, it's a big part of my testimony. And, um, so I, I just love Cal Poly. I've been there, you know, like I said, 10 years and, um, I've just really, just enjoyed it. It's my first kind of non, I guess you say non-Christian environment. I've worked in at the college, uh, level for this, for this long. And, um, it's been, it's been awesome and just been able to try to, um, you know, be me and be who I am in my faith and be in, you know, a world that's not always in their faith and trying to do what I can to spread the word of God the best I can. I think it's interesting that you were on the beach when you got the call <laughs> and you started trying to figure out your next step. And there's a lot of people that listen. I know there's a lot of coaches too. We talk to coaches from all levels, whether it's D1, D2, D3, even high school. And they they struggle with, am I supposed to be in this role? God, show me if you yeah. want me to, because I have a passion to coach. I have a passion to teach. And you were, sounds like you were going through that yourself and trying to figure out, okay, God, where do you want me to be? What am I doing here? Can you walk me through a little bit of those emotions and maybe even the wrestling that you might've done with, the, with God in trying to figure out that next step, that next direction? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, it was a, it was a really rough time and, I think when you're, uh, you know, living in Southern California and, you know, needing both incomes for us, for us particularly, um, you know, going through that, we wrestle with a lot of emotions. You know, all, I played basketball uh, pretty much my whole life. My dad coached me in high school. He was a pivotal part in, in me being a, being a coach, and I knew I wanted to coach because of him. And, um, you know, that's pretty much all, all I had done. And uh, so when that happened, you know, I, I, I figured, you know, I'm okay at a lot of things, but you know, my, my heart and passion was really in coaching. So um, it was really difficult to swallow. And, and through that time, too, you know, it's – you know, my husband and I talk about this openly, like we were never going to get divorced, but we, we were struggling in our marriage. Yeah. Um, you know, there was, when it first happened, there was probably, that happened in the end of March, probably at least a month there where, you know, our communication was, was not strong at all. And, um, you know, not to be cliche, but to be quite honest, what we did was we just started going to church more. We got involved in our church more, um, got involved more in our small groups and really just tried to lean on God through that difficult time. And I know sometimes people say it's so cliche, but, um, that's really what just got us together. And my husband's like, as long as we have each other, we have, we have God, we, we don't need this house. We didn't know if we were going to lose our house through this time. Um, but we had each other, we had our faith and we really just tried to lean on that. And, um, um, and, and it's so funny that whole time we were going through all these emotions, probably for a good, it, it took about three, four months. And then, um, you know, I, I listened to your podcast. I listened to several podcasts. I just listened to one with Stephen Furtick the other day um, when I was coming back from a re recruiting trip. And mm. uh, he was just talking about, um, you know, sowing seeds. And, um, and, I, and I thought about that time. And, um, and I've had a recent time too. this, this last month I've been struggling with stuff and a few things with our team. And, and it's like, I had this seed and I'm just holding on. And this seed is really my struggle is what it is. And, 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 and I just have it. And it's like, okay, I just need to, I need to release it so it can just grow. And, and so during that time, it was until we just finally gave everything, um, just to God and trusted in God. And it, it's so easy to say, it's so easy to say. And until we really truly gave it to him, um, we just felt just a sense of peace and a sense of calmness. And, um, and I don't know why we didn't do it sooner because <laughs> we wait and we go through that struggle and, and yeah. then we just release it. And it's, um, you know, and it was a blessing. And so, you know, I always look at, look at that situation and go, man, I don't think I ever would have been at Cal Poly had I not have been let go at the other university. And, um, and, and it's been great and I love it there. It's a, it's a great university. It's a high academic university. And, um, obviously the tradition of excellence and the women's basketball program is, super strong. Um, so it's been a fun time.
Yeah, three Sweet 16s, two Elite Eights, a Final Four in 2014, 25 wins last year. So things going well, obviously. You have success and you're doing something right to be at the same place for 10 years. So tell us a little more about Cal Poly. Division Two. a lot of fans may not know. Division Two. first of all, just knowing this from my my role in sports and knowing division two is a very high level of college basketball it's really good college basketball men and women um i'm guessing there's some scholarships there maybe not can you share with us a little bit about what that looks like recruiting and just putting this basketball program together Sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and one of the things too, a lot of people don't know, we're the only NCAA division to uh, women on the women's side have five national titles. Wow. Uh, so yeah. I, I haven't had any since I've been there, but you know, obviously we're, we're working to get there. Um, and we've had some success. Uh, we, we do have scholarship money. We're funded. Uh, we're, you know, the, the, the maximum for division two is 10 scholarships. So we're, we're right at getting close to about seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we get a ton of, division one transfers in our conference our conference is a athletic i guess you could say transfer conference whether it's junior college um or transfers a year we went to the final four i believe we had four to four possibly five i gotta go back and look five division one transfers at, at that time um and one of them was a uh, uh, runner-up national player of the year i mean so we're getting a lot of talent at our level and especially with the way the transfer portal which i'm sure we could have a whole podcast just discussing <laughs> the whole transfer portal right now yeah. uh, i mean it's been huge for us and, and we're division two and i know you you follow even on the men and women's side in college how it's been for the division one level so um uh, you know, it's actually been really helpful for us. I, I think what would really help us in the scholarship side is the, the men's division one is at 13 scholarships for division one. Um, and the women's side is at 15. I really think if the women's side went to the men's side at the 13 scholarships, it actually would help us some as in, I guess what I'm saying in that is a lot of number 14, 15 kids that are kind of getting scholarships, you know, a lot of times aren't aren't either playing yeah. or for whatever reason they decide to redshirt them. And, and, um, you know, so I, I think those are the type of kids that probably would be more successful at a different, um, different level if they, you know, kind of did their research a little bit more. I know a lot of coaches have, I guess, I don't know if it's an identity or core values as they prepare for an upcoming season, uh, maybe a word or philosophy. Do you do that? Do you have one with your crew this year? Is that something that you kind of put together? Okay, this is going to be our our one goal, our one mindset. Yeah, we've actually had it for a while, and then we do kind of pick different things to go along with it. But our main thing we always say is we all say all in. And I know we actually had that term before it got really popular, Uh, but we used the term all in and, uh, you know, we go around the first day uh, in our first meeting in August and ask each of them, well, what did it mean to them? Uh, and we actually are leaving at noon today to go on our team retreat and we'll try to get in a little bit more in depth with, uh, you know, what our focus this year will be. And it, and it does kind of change, but the big focus in um you know, the whole picture is, is just being all in. And what does that mean to them? We have a lot of seniors this year. Um, we've actually have already struggled with some injuries. Um, you know, we have one, one player that transferred division one for us this year that we had anticipated to be, um, you know, one of our, I felt like one of the top players in the conference this year and fortunately just had ACL surgery a week ago. So being able to adjust to some of those things, um, you know, just as a, as a team and things like that. And just really keeping that focus for, you know, what does all in mean? I think we had, um, we, we only get four hours a week of basketball right now up until October 15th. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and there was a week we weren't sure we had another player that had to get, we had to wait to get approval for her. She had, um, an MRI and we had someone else who was sitting down. I think we only had seven players out of practice. My assistant coaches are practicing and, uh, and you could tell it was a little bit of, of defeat and I'm in there, going, you know, you know, when we went to the, when we went to, um, the lead eight, my first year here, we had nine players all season and we went about a month with seven players. I said, we will figure this out. That's right. Um, you guys just have to be all in and bought into, you know, what our, um, just core values are. And, 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 you know, we always talk about there's three things we can control you've heard this it's attitude effort and enthusiasm yeah uh, we try to focus on those three things every day in practice oh, i love that i tell that to my daughter she's 15 yeah. in, in high school and i say listen you can't control how much time you play or anything else but you can control your attitude your effort and even enthusiasm is a third that i yeah. that i 
think is perfect in telling them all in uh, with Cal Poly. You're also all in for the Lord, and I love that. That's kind of why you're on this podcast even more than what you do as a basketball coach. So take us through when Christ started to enter the picture for you and your testimony a little bit for us. I grew up in Christian home. Uh, both parents uh, just really planting that seed from an early age, uh, you know, with myself and my, my two sisters and um, grew up in the church, uh, you know, during high school and travel ball. And, um, you know, we didn't probably get to go, you know, we weren't really involved, I guess you should say, in their youth things and things like that, just because I would miss a lot of it with the, with my sports. And then in, in, in college, I guess you could say, um, probably just straight a little bit, you know, I, I, I attended the FCA things, but I guess I wasn't, uh, truly all in, I guess you could say at that time. And, um, and then, you know, when I really got my first head coaching job at Azusa Pacific university at the age of 27, mm. um, you know, it really kind of, um, you know, I was, I was, I was just surrounded by all the workers were, you know, were Christians and strong in their faith. And, uh, and, and not that I, not that I wasn't, but I definitely, um, needed to be, I think at that time kind of surrounded, uh, around, you know, a lot of believers. And, um, so I really grew that year in my faith and have just grown every year since. And, um, and I guess you could more so, I think a lot of people say this, just really making your faith your own, you know, growing up in a Christian home doesn't always mean you're going to be this, uh, perfect Christian or you're going to know everything. So we were, we were raised with values and I'm extremely grateful to my, to my parents for that. Um, but I think, you know, once I, I was able to kind of really grow that faith on my own and make it my own faith and, you know, not, not a faith that my parents were, were looking at me to have, um, has been pretty, pretty special to have. Danelle, that faith carries over into all that we do, whether it's coaching or parenting or being a wife. Walk us through, though, from a basketball perspective, maybe some of the challenges you face as a coach. I mean, coaching young ladies who are trying to figure themselves out in that 18 to 22 range is such a formidable range. I think of my daughter who's 15 and just in three years, she's going to be ready for this world. But take us through some of the challenges that you face from, you know, coaching ladies coming from different areas, coming together to battle on a basketball court. There's just so much, so many challenges, I think, to that Walk us through that. Yeah, and it, and it's actually, a, in my opinion, has changed in um, you know since I started back in in '03 as a head coach. Everything has even changed to where it's it's actually making it almost I feel like harder um, to coach. So I've had to really change some of the things that I do, but yet my expectations and values core values have remained the same. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, we deal, I mean, right now, I, I mean, social media is, we, we, we do have a rule once our first game starts, uh, I guess this year it'll be November 1st up until our very last, uh, playoff game. We do no social media. Hmm. And I kind of stole that from Gino Oriyama. Um, he did that with his team and I was like, you know what? I like that. And, and, and part of that is there's, there's, there's two reasons with that. And then, one of the reasons is, you just waste too much time on social media and, you know, Cal Poly is strong academic school and we have a lot of things we need to accomplish on the basketball court. So when do you have time to really do those, do that? The other thing is, is because we're in state division two, we don't have all the resources, um, you know, like UCLA and UConn, you know, to have someone that is specifically hired just to monitor our student athletes, social media and what they're posting. Yeah. Um, and I don't have time to do that. So, um, so we actually have that, that in place, uh, with our athletes, but I, I've dealt with, to be quite honest with you, um, you know, on the, on the women's side, I talked, I've talked to my men's coach about this, but on the women's side, we've dealt with, um, young ladies, uh, struggling with sexual orientation. I've had a player get pregnant. I've had, um, players that have, um, um, you know, maybe tested marijuana. Um, and, yeah. and I'm just kind of keeping it keeping it real. There's, I, I'm still, you know, every day there's, there's just something that, that comes up and, and, and I'm going to tell you what we do. I haven't cut those players, um, try to love them and try to help them. That's and, good. and I think there's a lot of coaches out there and, and I would imagine at the division one level, it's just a whole different type of, of pressure for coaches, um, that they're just going to go on and, you know, just get their, 
next person in line and they probably are saying, Hey, I don't need this person. Um, and, and for us, you know, I use it as part of my ministry. Okay. Well, how can I love on this person? How can I, um, help this young woman? Um, you know, she's a believer that makes it easier. We can openly, um, pray and, uh, do things like that. And I can get her resources, get her, um, into a church and things like that. But if she's not open believer and how am I going to somehow try to, to help her and guide her, um, without, you know, cause I'm at a public school. So I have, there's a fine line between that. And so how do I openly still try to help her and utilize, you know, my knowledge and the faith that I have. And, uh, and I really just try to be a light. I talk about that a lot with my players. Um, who are you a light to today? And, and I try to do that with them. And, and sometimes we're the only light that they see. Yeah. Um, and they do come from all different backgrounds, you know, and, and we do get a lot of players, um, you know, sometimes that come from, you know, there's socio socioeconomic backgrounds or maybe not as, as high and things like that. And, um, so just trying to, you know, just really help them and, um, whatever way we can. And, and I'm, I, I'm try to live not, not like, um, I'm not perfect. I'm not like God, but I, I try to live the values that, that Jesus had in building relationships. And I feel like that's a core value for, for anyone in this world, um, including you and what you do. It's all about relationships and how are you building those relationships? And, uh, so I really try to do that with my, with my players. One of the things I just recently added this year that I took from a clinic, um, one of my coaching friends, he calls them weekly tens, um, you know, cause we're, we're so busy and I don't have the resources as division one coaches. So we're doing everything. I'm sometimes cleaning the backboards, yeah. uh, they have a game and things like that. So I'm, I'm kind of doing everything. Sometimes I'm doing laundry, but, um, so I was, I felt like last year we were so successful. I had such a, a wonderful group of young women and we returned a lot this year. So I'm excited. Um, but I felt like I didn't really get as much one-on-one -on -one time with them. So I'm excited. I just, I, I'm on week three of our weekly tens. They schedule a 10 minute meeting with me. Sometimes it goes longer. Um, but the meeting is their meeting. We talk about whatever they want to talk about. Um, and sometimes, you know, they may not have anything to talk about. Sometimes they may have a lot to talk about and just really trying to build that relation with them, relationship with them in hopes that, um, you know, I can encourage them and help them and lead them in any way I possibly can. Yeah, I always tell people the greatest testimony you can have is is building relationships and then just being you and suddenly that's going to draw an attraction from someone else to be able to talk about conversations of faith and other things that are outside of the realm of what you are doing every single day. So I've heard many college coaches, especially those who are believers, some on this podcast, talk about their purpose. Danelle, what is your purpose? What would you just say if somebody said, what is your purpose, Danelle Bishop? I hope that they would say that I've impacted their life and impact in a positive way. Um, and, and that's my purpose. That's why I'm so passionate about, you know, the game of women's basketball. I, I love coaching. And if you ever get a chance to watch one of our games online, I think you'll see that passion, but more importantly, um, you know, going, I'm going in a couple of weeks, one of my players from APU is getting inducted to the hall of fame and getting all the girls together that played with her and their families and just seeing how successful they are. And, um, I, I think just knowing that there was some fact, some type of impact that I made on their life, um, is really huge for me. And if I'm not doing that, um, then I'm not serving my purpose and I'm not, um, you know, I, I really feel like I shouldn't be coaching for that matter. Anybody shouldn't be coaching if they're not trying to impact lives of these young people that are 17 to 22, that just need so much guidance. And, um, you know, there's so much in the world that is hitting them from all different angles. And, um, you know, they, they, they may not always seem like they, they need it, but they do. And so I would hope people would say that my purpose is um, just impacting lives. Talk to a lot of coaches, especially those after a season is over, and they'll talk about their tank just being empty, right? And it's not just being empty from the fact that you've gone all in as a coach, but in all way, in in many ways, you're just going all in with this crazy start of the season and the four year four month grind that is coaching a long college basketball season. So, in that essence, have you made any? Um, daily disciplines implemented them into your life to maybe stay poured into. So how does a coach like yourself, who's pouring into these kids, 
uh, stay poured into yourself, whether it's spiritually, whether it's just emotionally, uh, physically, whatever it is, how do you stay poured into Janelle? I gotta be honest. I, every, every morning I, I really utilize the Bible app with their devotionals that they have. I get, um, so I, I love, I get, the emails, uh, that I get from, from you too. I love podcasts are my big thing because yeah. I am in the car a lot. I am, um, you know, especially this year I'm recruiting a lot. Um, I think I'm on day 13 or 14 days that I've worked straight already. And, um, I utilize the podcasts, um, a lot and it's hard to stay poured in. And, you know, when I come home from work, I have two kids, 10 and seven that need mom. (laughs) And, um, you know, so my day doesn't end on, and I have to have that same energy, that same light and love that I'm pouring in at work. And I have to have that for my kids. And, um, you know, obviously being in church is is big. And, um, during season, if I'm for here on Sundays, I'm going to church. And I, I think that's always really important too. I think people, you know, a lot of times say, Hey, you don't have to attend church, but we really do need to, to be in church. And, um, you know, that's something that I'm always poured into too, especially out of season. It's trying to get there, but, um, I hate to keep bringing up the podcast, but the podcasts are just really big for me and, um, really just helping me fill my tank. Cause I listen to them. Um, let's see, five days a week, maybe six days a week. If we have a Saturday game, I'm listening to it four to five days a week in the car and yeah. um, just getting to work and feeling energized and feeling encouraged um, really kind of gets me going. So they're really big for me. So thank you, um, you know, for everything that you've been doing because they have been impactful and people are hearing them and listening to them. I appreciate that very much. And we're glad to have you here on the show. A couple class questions here on the podcast. This is kind of uh, pivoting to a, maybe a different topic but I think it's just a cool question to ask. Speaking to a women's basketball coach, what are your thoughts on the assimilation? We're seeing this, especially in the NBA, of women basketball coaches into the men's world. You're in the women's world, obviously, but I love it. I think it's great. I think there's tons of women who know just as much basketball, if not more, than I'll ever know. And I feel like I know a lot about basketball. We should all be kind of assimilating together. What are your thoughts on that? Especially, you're seeing it more in the NBA than you are in college basketball, but I love it. So what are your thoughts on that? I think it's amazing, and I think it's wonderful. I I honestly don't know why it's taken this long for it to happen. Uh, I've always, I feel like coaching is coaching, and if you're a good coach, you can coach anybody. I mean, I, I just went and watched, I can't tell you how many games this last weekend and to tell you how many staffs were completely all males at this tournament. I just went to, it was a, it was a junior college tournament. And, uh, I would say the majority of all the, the coaching staffs were male staffs. And, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about it and I'm not this over feminist type person, sure. uh, but I, I was thinking, okay, why is that just okay? Why is it I just don't understand why that's just okay. Like we're, 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 we're people and we know the game and uh, you know, I, I just don't, I don't understand it. And I think it's pretty awesome that women are getting this chance. And, um, you know, that's always been something I've always thought about doing and, um, God willing, if it happens, it happens. And if not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy doing what I'm doing, um, you know, on the women's side, but, um, I, I think it'd be fun. You know, I, I coach my son's teams right now. They're only seven, but they listen. Yeah. Um, I, I, I hear, I hear the men don't listen as much once, uh, that's why a lot of men like coaching women. It's because they say women listen a little bit better, but, um, I don't know, maybe the men will listen to the women coaching more. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's great. And I think, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to like, uh, dive deep into this sort of, you know, equality thing and all that. But I do think, listen, we're at a stage in 2019 where this shouldn't be, I don't know, this shouldn't be a topic that we're talking about. Why aren't there more men doing this? Why aren't there more women doing this? I think it should just be, if you're good, you're good. And let's get the right. best who are doing it. Like to me, I watch Gino Oriem and I'm thinking this dude could coach, in yeah. the NBA, he could coach men's college ball, he could coach high school ball, whatever. And the same on on some of the amazingly talented women who are coaching too, right? Uh, absolutely, I I completely agree, and 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 I think maybe the NBA making that jump before the majority of college has done it, uh, you know, maybe that's going to trickle down some and yeah. give them confidence that these women 
can do this job. You know, they're more than capable of, of doing it. Um, so I, I hope it does trickle down and I don't know when that's going to start. I just talked to, uh, one of my mentors that, that coaches and, uh, she's going to take a sabbatical and, and she has an opportunity to go coach with a division one, um, men's program during her sabbatical. And she's like, what do you think? And I, it's a no brainer. Go do it. Yeah. Go enjoy the opportunity. And I think it just, you know, obviously the more women that do it, the better it is for the rest of us. Absolutely. The better it is for college basketball, for, for the game of basketball, I should say, in general. Sure. All right. Last question. You said you listen to our podcast, so you know where I'm going here with this. What are you learning from God today? What's he teaching you where you are in the life, the season of life you're in? You said you're a mom to two kids, and we didn't really even talk about the balancing of coaching and being a parent. You're also a wife and you're a coach. So what is God teaching you right now? <laughs> And he's been teaching me a lot. Uh, it, you know, I looked three weeks ago. I'm like, man, it's only September 10th. Why am I so, so stressed out? We haven't even started playing. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it it's really it, – I have to remember that faith is a focus. And I heard that on a podcast the other day. Mm-hmm. Faith is a focus. And your faith will slip away if we focus on our feelings. Mm-hmm. And that's what one of the things um, – you know, that I heard and I was listening to and I, and, and I really had to register that like your faith will slip away if we focus on how we feel. And a lot of times how we feel is our current situation. Okay. So I have these injured players right now. I only had seven players three weeks ago, you know, for whatever reason. And, and, and I was, I was not feeling good, but I wasn't relying on my faith and it really, um, you know, and, and daily just really trying to focus on that. And, um, you know, it's real easy with the busyness and you, mention the balance part, but, um, it's real easy to get, you know, just, Hey, we're doing this, we're doing this. You know, we live in Southern California and I feel like it's 10 times worse. And, and we got to go to this practice. I, I had a recruit on official visit yesterday and I'm rushing home after there to go get my daughter to go get her to practice. And, um, so we get so busy and I think, um, you know, you said it best, what are you taking time for you to do? And, um, and, and so that's, that's my focus right now is I'm, taking time on making faith my focus for one, but also trying to take some time for me. I know I've been busy the last two weeks. Um, I'm not even a nail person, but I bite my nails and I said, you know what? I'm going to go get that massage in that chair at least once every three weeks to do something for me. Um, <laughs> you know, so I've been doing that. I, I know it may sound minor and you know, my players that have been around me, they're like, coach, I've never seen your nails done. And, and that's totally random, but, um, you know, I'm just trying to do something for me. And, um, I know it's small, but I get that, you know, one little hour of doing things, but, um, I am learning to keep my faith, my focus and not get caught up. And, and, um, you know, if you guys, anybody listening can, you know, I pray for everybody listening to, to be able to do that. And, you guys pray for me as well as my season begins. And, you know, I, I told our players, you know, we're busy now, but, um, we're going to be 10 times busier in a couple of weeks and it, it's just gonna, it's just gonna get rolling and being able to make sure that, um, you know, God has to take place in our lives or every single day. And if he's not, we're going to stray pretty easily and, and we're not going to be leading people, uh, the way, the way God wants us to lead. And, and I don't want to be a Christian on the fence, and, and I, I hate, you know, in those times where I do feel like I'm like that because it's not that I'm necessarily doing anything I shouldn't do, but I'm not doing anything, um, you know, to create this, um, this power and vision and this positive atmosphere for people. And so that's a daily struggle for me that I gotta, I gotta come in every day ready to go, you know, and, mm. um, it's, it's a, it's a daily grind and, um, and it is a daily struggle and that, that's, that's just has to be my focus right now is keeping my faith a daily, daily focus. That's good. Jesus talks about rest just as more as important as anything else. And it's interesting because is there, was there anyone more busier than him <laughs> in the three right. years of his ministry? And yet he took time to rest. So there's no reason why you or I or anyone else can't find that time to rest. Uh, Danelle Bishop, this has been great. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, wish you nothing but the best, certainly for a great season with Cal Poly and looking forward to hopefully having you back on again someday. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And many thanks to Danelle Bishop for joining us here on Sports Spectrum. Cal Poly Pomona women's college basketball coach. Looking forward to seeing how her team does here in 2019-2020 and possibly seeing them in the postseason again to add another Sweet 16, maybe an Elite Eight, or maybe even a Final Four or National Championship to the resume of Danelle 
Bishop. You can give her a follow over on Twitter. She is at CPP Coach Bishop. CPP Coach Bishop. And she's a lot of fun, uh, great person, and uh, has a beautiful family too. You'll see the picture of her with her husband and her two kids and just an awesome story and testimony. Grateful to have her here sharing her story on Sports Spectrum's podcast. We're also grateful to you for listening. We really are. Check out our website, sportspectrum.com. That's where all of our content can be found. You can also reach us on our social media pages and you can get me directly, whether it's on Twitter at Jason Romano or email me, jason at sportspectrum.com. If you have any guest ideas, any feedback on this interview, or you just want to say hello and send a, a note of encouragement, I would love to hear from you directly, jason at sportspectrum.com. Com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time with a new episode on Sports Spectrum's podcast. I hope you have a great rest of your day.